so that you can see my little tiny canvases because it's kind of hard to see them down here and my tarp is a little icky. So we're going to put them right here on this little shoe box. That's the top to my sea glass shoe box. Hello, Darlene. Hello, everybody. Hello, Beverly again. So what I did was I took all of my sea glass on my table and I just kind of filtered around and went through until I found a couple of triangle shaped pieces that are similar to the shape of a martini glass, okay? The top of martini glass. And then I did the same thing and went through looking for long skinny shapes that could be the bottom of the martini glass. So what I ended up with is, and these are already just painted white. They come uh, pre-primed, but a lot of times they are super dirty or marred up. So you wanna go ahead before you get started and just paint them uh, so they're nice and fresh with some uh, white paint. So these are pre-painted white, and I, I should have painted them gray or something, but hindsight's 2020. So I found two of these triangle shapes that I can use for martini glass. So I'm just going to set them right on because I want to figure out what I want to do with them before I do anything permanent. So I also found two long skinny shapes that I can use for the bottom of my martini glass. So we'll use, let me see, we'll use one here. Let's move it down a little. So that's why I'm putting them down first. So I make sure they're where I want them. So it's gonna be about right there. And then I'm gonna use my pen, my favorite little pen. This is called a graphic 0.5 needle drawing pen, and it's super precise. It's got a really fine point on it, so it's um, super precise. So what I'm gonna use this for is to make the stem of my martini glass, and then we're gonna add a little stir stick, and I'm gonna write cheers, and then I have two itsy bitsy teeny weeny pieces of green glass for olives. Is that not super cute? So let's do this first. <coughs> Excuse me. The first thing I wanna do is get these placed kinda of where I know I want them. I'm gonna move this one over, and first off, I'm gonna just write the word cheers with my graphic pen. Nothing fancy. I'm just gonna write it. Cheers, C. H E E R S and an apostrophe. Okay, so that is how I'm gonna start. Nothing special about that. Y'all know I do not do well at lettering. Okay, so now I want to draw my stem. So I'm gonna hold this piece just lightly. Actually, I'm gonna move it down just a smidge. And I'm gonna draw a straight line from the point of my martini glass to the base. Boom, let me just move that real quick. So I'm just gonna draw my stem, boom, all right? So then this will go here, this will go here. Oh my goodness, so stinking cute already. So now I'm going to add a stir stick, a little swizzle. So it's gonna come out and I'm gonna make a little dot on the end. And then this is where our little piece of green glass is gonna go. Let me get it on there the way I want it. Hang on. Put a little piece of green glass cause that's gonna be our olive. Oh my Lord, simple, so simple. Look how cute that is. Now, before we get started though, I lost the top. Oh, it's on the pen, I'm so crazy. 
Oh my goodness. Before we get started doing any resin or anything, I'm gonna just put one little dot of glue. This is clear tacky glue. Just one little dot of glue on each little piece. Don't use a lot, just a little. Just something to keep, hold it together until we get our resin on. So we'll put that back. So cute. Then I'll put a little dot of glue where my olive is. I think I need a new glue. Oh, Sonia, you can watch the replay. All I did was paint my little canvas white. Figured out, this is sea glass that I'm using. And um, hang on, I gotta get my piece of glass the way I want it. I'm using little pieces of sea glass. And um, I actually should not have glued that yet because I want a resin first. So I'm gonna take that off. I'm so crazy. See, I got excited and ahead of myself because I'm thinking about glue and stuff and then resin, but we are going to, I'm gonna put this over here. We're gonna resin first and then put our sea glass on so that it doesn't go clear. So let me put these over here. So we're gonna do, <laughs> see I lost my mind. I got so excited about how cute it was, I couldn't stop myself. So we're gonna go over here and do the same thing. First thing I'm gonna do is write cheers. So we'll write it right here. C H E E R S. Cheers. I'm a terrible writer, <laughs> just so you know. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm gonna draw my line again between the bottom of my glass and the tip of my martini, the stem. Move that out of the way a little. Then we'll do our swizzle stick. Boom. Do a little bitty dot for the end of our stick. We'll move our glass aside. Now you can't just use any pen when you're doing this. I actually want to see if I can wipe up a little bit of that glue. You can't just use any pen. It needs to be a specific pen needs to be archival quality, or you do not use a Sharpie. If you use a Sharpie, you're gonna be so sad because the resin will make that Sharpie run, and then you'll be super sad. Okay, so now that we have our markings on, we have our stem, our swizzle stick, our letters, we are going to mix some resin. Let me move this down here. And I've already pre-poured. Yes, a cute little background would work too. I was just out of time because I thought that I was doing something different. And so this was kind of last minute. So yeah, maybe next time we'll do a little a cute little sunset because you know, it's five o'clock somewhere, right? Sonia, I do not sell um, sea glass. I bought mine from Pinterest. So check on Pinterest. Yes, a beach thing like the turtle, absolutely. So I actually have pre-poured my resin. I use art resin, I know you guys know that. Thank you, Rima. I know most of you guys already know that, but I use art resin. It's a two-part resin specifically designed for art pieces, and it's a 50-50 mix. So I've already pre-poured my little bits, and I have a teaspoon of each. So I'm using these little baby medicinal little measuring cups for my resin and I need my gloves. Where are they? Here they are. So before I get started, I'm gonna put my gloves on. So we're gonna resin our little canvas before we put our glass on, because if we put our glass on and then resin over the top, then the resin will make the sea glass translucent. And we don't want that to happen, so we are gonna do it backwards. So, let me put the top on my pen, 
And where's my stir stick? Right here. So I'm going to mix part A into part B. So this is a teaspoon of resin and a teaspoon of hardener. I think they do. Uh, I bought a mass quantity. So I bought it from either eBay or Pinterest. I'm pretty sure it's Pinterest. So if you want a bunch, because sometimes you have to go through a bunch to find the exact shape piece you want. It took me about 10 minutes to find uh, the right size triangles in the bottoms of my stems. So, but you could use a uh, vase glass too. You could, use, you could cut your own little pieces for certain. So I'm mixing part A into part B or vice versa. Not sure which was which, and it doesn't matter which one you put in, as long as they're equal, and as long as you stir correctly. So I've put one into the other. Oh, my nose. So I am gonna stir this for three minutes, and we are gonna start Rima now. Now I'm gonna stir slow. I'm not gonna whip it to death because the faster you stir, the more bubbles you incorporate into your mixture and you wanna minimize that as much as possible. Now you're gonna get bubbles. It's inevitable because anytime you're stirring something, you're incorporating air. You are gonna get bubbles, but you just wanna try to minimize so that you don't have a lot of bubbles in your art piece. And also, when you're mixing your resin, don't cheat. Don't think because it's only an ounce that you can mix for less time. You, good night, Richard. You mix for three minutes, okay? So while we mix, I'm gonna remind you that boot camp is gonna be open for registration come Monday. So if anybody has any questions about what boot camp is, you can ask me now while we're stirring. Oh no, Tony. Oh my goodness. Brenda and all your Key West beach glass. You go girl. So boot camp is a four week beginner's course for people who are interested in learning how to create glass art. So we end boot camp, it's four weeks long and we teach you all the things you need to know to become a successful glass artist, including uh, painting your canvas using plasters, uh, uh, putting words on your canvas, cutting glass, shaping glass, breaking glass, tinting resin, tinting your glass. I'm trying to think what else. There's everything, all the things you need to know about resin, just everything. It's a pretty uh, full of information course. And that is for, beginner, for beginners. And uh, we're pretty excited to be offering it up for the last, this will be the last time we're doing it. Well, we won't do it again until late summer, early fall, and it'll be different. So we'll be doing a different version. So this one's super fun, and we do a, a unicorn. We do not do a unicorn. We do a seahorse, and we do an Amazing Grace cross. We do a flower garden and the cutest little turtle piece with tinted resin in the water that you ever saw. So we would love to have you. If you're interested, you can go to artshattered.com and click on boot camp page at the top of the website and it'll tell you all the information you need to know about boot camp. So we're super excited to be offering it again and this will be the last time for those four pieces. So, how much time? Was that not three minutes of yakety yak? My goodness, I need to talk slower. <laughs> I 
Y'all do not need to miss tomorrow because if I can go and find the uh, piece that I need for tomorrow's, you are gonna freaking love it. Uh, yes, Elizabeth, I do. I use the thicker sheet magnet and just cut it in pieces big enough. And what I usually use is a piece that's about an inch by two inches so it fits right in the middle. Uh, you want a pretty substantial piece of magnet just so that it'll hold it up with the weight of your glass and resin. So yeah, video won't play for me. Oh. But yeah, you can use the round disc. Just don't use something small and lightweight. Use something fairly thick. Okay, so Rima said we're ready. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kinda move this up a little because I want to use my blocks. Hey, Deborah. I'm going to use my blocks to set my piece on, but here's how I'm going to work this. I'm going to take my piece in my hand, and all I have are my words and my lines on it so far, and I'm going to put my stick down because I'm making a mess. I'm gonna drizzle some right on my canvas, okay? I'm gonna use my stick to smear it around over the entire canvas. Now use your stick, because that will help you not rub in to your um, ink marks too much. There's something else on my canvas. I'm not sure what that is, but let's get rid of it. Put a little bit more, just a drop or two. It is a must. So I'm gonna use my stick so I'm not rubbing in to my wording and stuff too much. Voila. So 100% coverage with your resin. I see a little hair or something right there. Let me get that off too. So I've got 100% coverage of my Resin, I still see a little hair. It's about to make me angry. Don't make me mad now. That's okay, Teresa. Let's see, get it off. There it is. So now I'm gonna lay it on top of my little block. I'm gonna bring back my cute little martini glass and I'm gonna place it right in that spot where it needs to be between my swizzle stick and my stem. Now I'm gonna take this piece that's the bottom of my glass and place it where it needs to be. And I'm gonna take my cute little olive and put it where it needs to be and voila, what, what? This is so adorable. Look at this guys, is that not stinking cute as it can be? So if we had added our sea glass and then poured on top, our sea glass would be clear. So it wouldn't show up as well. It wouldn't be near as cute. So let, I'm gonna set this one aside. You be still. And we're gonna do this one. And I, we're not gonna use near this uh, resin, but I have a couple uh, more magnets to cover too. So I'll tell you how much it took for these two pieces. Let me look. Uh, we'll spread this. Make sure you cover the whole piece so it's consistent. I like these quick projects too. You could go get you, these uh, little magnets came, or the little, um, Canvases came from Hobby Lobby and they're often on sale. So if the Master's Touch goes on sale, then these are included in the Master's Touch line. And uh, so you can get these on sale half off, which makes them super cheap. I sell these for 10 bucks uh, and I did in the uh, store in Georgia. But you know, depending on where you are, you know, I lived in the country. Depending on where you are, you could probably get 12 to 15 for them, <clears throat> but I sell these for 10. So now I can get, 
I don't want to have too much resin on my hands so that I get a mess up my um, little martini glass. But I'm going to stick that little triangle right there where he needs to go. Let me scoot him over a little. Then we'll take our little olive. Let me make sure I have it holding it right. Put our olive on. And the bottom of our glass. Oops. And I'm gonna move this out of the way. Cause, are they on sale now? Yes, go get you some, guys. So I'm gonna sit this right there on the side of my block, just in case we have drippage. And real quick, I'm just gonna hit these for 10 seconds or less with my heat. So I'm gonna use my propane torch and just pop those bubbles real quick, just real quick, once over, once over, done. Look how cute. Let me see if I can get them down here where you can see them. Oh my goodness. Guys, are these not adorable? And look how fast that was. O-M-G. That is so cute. And these would sell like hotcakes. So let them dry completely. And then when you put your magnet on the back, uh, add a little glue to the back too, because sometimes I've had the issue of the magnet. It sticks really well, but after a couple of days, it wants to start peeling off. So I usually add a little bit of glue as well on each end so that you make sure your magnet stays on the back, your magnetic sheeting stays on the back. So aren't these cute? Oh, my goodness so you can make so many different cute little things with the sea glass depending on the shapes you have